cardiovascular risk factors. There are a number of well-known cardiovascular risk factors that are best divided into modifiable and non-modifiable. Atherosclerosis is a systemic disease. A patient is unlikely to have isolated cardiovascular, cerebrovascular or peripheral vascular disease. The risk factors are the same regardless of the vascular territory, although there is some evidence to suggest that diabetes and smoking particularly increase the risk in the lower limbs. The modifiable risk factors include smoking, diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension, obesity and lack of exercise and alcohol. Non-modifiable risk factors include increasing age, ethnicity and family history. The more that is learnt about these risk factors, the better the medical management of this problem can become. There are newer risk factors emerging such as C-reactive protein, hyperhomocysteinemia and elevated fibrinogen, although benefits of treating these have not been shown. Without a doubt, the most significant modifiable risk factor for atherosclerotic disease is cigarette smoking, giving an odds ratio of about 4.5. Smokers are more likely to develop atherosclerotic disease, to develop complications of peripheral vascular disease and for it to deteriorate by continuing to smoke. The precise mechanism by which smoking causes atherosclerosis is still somewhat elusive despite the fact that the connection with claudication was recognized in 1911. There is a much smaller, but present, increased risk with passive smoking. Because of the high rates of smoking among vascular patients, it means that there are also high rates of chronic obstructive airways disease and cancer in vascular patients. Diabetes mellitus is the second most significant modifiable risk factor after smoking. Diabetics tend to develop more diffuse and distal disease, compounded by other diabetes-related complications such as neuropathy and increased susceptibility to infection. The lifetime risk of a major lower limb amputation is 10 to 16 times higher in a diabetic. The risk also rises the longer the patient has been diabetic and the more poorly the blood sugars are controlled. The UK Prospective Diabetes Study identified that, for every 1% increase in HbA1c, the risk of peripheral vascular disease increased by 28%. The effects of diabetes can be ameliorated by good glucose control but cannot be completely avoided. The combination of diabetes with hypertension exacerbates the risk. The Framingham Heart Study in Massachusetts which commenced in 1948, is a very well-known ongoing longitudinal study that provided much of the basis for what we now know about risk factors for atherosclerotic disease. In this study, a fasting cholesterol, 7 doubled the risk of claudication. However, the story is slightly more complicated than this because the ratio of HDL, LDL cholesterol is also important. The higher this ratio, the lower the risk, because cholesterol, triglycerides and LDLs, the bad fats are known to have a detrimental impact on plaque formation whereas HDLs are known to have a protective effect. Again, the Framingham Heart Study was one of the first to show the epidemiological link between atherosclerotic disease and raised blood pressure. And again, the precise pathological link has not clearly been identified. Obesity and lack of exercise increase the risk of atherosclerotic disease but this can be via the confounding factors of cholesterol profile, hypertension and diabetes mellitus. There is clear evidence that atherosclerosis risk increases with age. Some ethnic groups are more prone to hypertension, hypercholesterolemia and diabetes. Family history is almost certainly a complex polygenic issue. If you have a first-degree relative with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, this doubles your risk. Overall, 
Another study from Framingham has indicated that family history is responsible for about 20% of a patient's total peripheral vascular disease risk. The effect of gender is variable on risk with some studies showing higher rates of disease in women and others showing higher rates in men. Certainly the premenopausal state is protective against peripheral vascular disease such that premenopausal women have lower rates compared with age-matched controls. Excessive alcohol raises LDL cholesterol and can increase BP resulting in raised risk. However, the effects of alcohol on the development of peripheral vascular disease are contentious. Vascular and endovascular surgery at a glance was used as the primary source for this educational presentation.